tonight on RBT. A car that's possibly stolen, highly intoxicated driver, number plates from an unregistered car, and we don't know who owns the car. Just get someone to go to the police station, please. Oh, I'm hoping I'll be all right, but I don't think it's a good gut feeling at all. Don't do something silly like that. Mate, I'll ask you one more time, and you be straight, because if I find out otherwise, angry pants comes out. Turn it off, don't touch anything. You're under arrest, hoarding an RBT site. You look drunk, sound drunk, smell drunk. You got a one-way ticket to jail, mate. Acting Sergeant Phoebus travels all over the state testing for alcohol and drug-affected drivers. During his time on the road, there isn't much he hasn't seen. And then we'll do a nimbin. This car pulls up, up a bit up the road, so we think, oh, yes, yeah, so that highway patrol bolts off after him. Yep. And it was nudist. He's prepared for anything. So when he spots a clapped-out car making an unusual turn, he's onto it. He's already pulled over. Oh, he needs to drive over real quick. Police suspect the driver is trying to avoid them. There you go. Yeah. Is this your place here? No, we're actually looking for an address. You are, are you? Yeah. At the wheel is 45-year-old local Tanya, but passenger Robert claims he owns the car. Whose car is it? Oh, mine. I just brought it off mum. You got Reg, eh? No. Oh. No, I'm looking for a mate's place, actually. I'm, I've only just been released, actually, from jail. Robert is out on parole with no licence, so when he bought the car, he asked neighbour Tanya to drive. Trouble is, when Robert asked the favour, Tanya was already drinking at home. Have you had any alcoholic drinks in the last 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah? When did you have your last drink? I can't remember. Keep going, 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 stop. If Tanya blows over now, she may think twice about helping out a neighbour. You returned a reading of 0.141. You now are under arrest and you'll be okay. subjected to a breath analysis. Blowing almost three times over the limit is just another thing to add to Tanya's list of troubles. I had a... I had a... St 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 uh, stroke. I can't talk. Yeah. And as for Robert, police suspect the car is stolen. Is the car registered? No. Nope. And the plates don't belong to it? And place number. They belong to a VT Commodore that belongs to my grandmother. For acting Sergeant Phoebus, things just aren't adding up. A car that's possibly stolen or unlawfully obtained, number plates from an unregistered car on a different car, highly intoxicated driver. And we don't know who owns the car. Driving under the influence of drugs is fast taking over from drink driving as a major problem on our roads. We found from experience that by doing the stationary drug testing that a lot of people are using social media to advise their friends and family of where our drug testing buses are. So police have to stay one step ahead of the game. The solution? Good afternoon. Covert mobile drug testing units. And just slide them forward and hand it back to me, please. It's barely 9am and police are kept busy with a steady stream of positive results. OK, so at this point in time, you're under arrest for the purpose of a drug test. There's already a revolving door of drug-affected drivers and queues are building at the testing bus. Police initially pulled over Pete Plater Jason for talking on his mobile. Then he tested positive for methamphetamine. Jason's morning started innocently enough. Just one passenger? No, yeah, me and my um, son, four-year-old son, taking the young bloke up there to the shop. She left it till a bit later. His mother came and picked him up and uh, took him back. Jason's keeping his cool. Confident the test was wrong, 
He blames passive methamphetamine smoke for the results. Don't use it, it's just I was in a room and my associates were using it, so naturally I'm inhaling it, you know. As a bricklayer, Jason covers quite a few kilometres. You need your licence to get around, you know, get to work, whatever you do. But hopefully it's negative anyway. Let's just take that back. If Jason is telling the truth about inhaling secondary smoke, the result of this test will prove him right or wrong. It's the start of a long night shift for officers in Mount Druitt, and as usual, they're prepared for anything. It's a hot night. Um... We're uh, out looking for anyone uh, drink driving or anyone that's affected by uh, drugs as well. And Officer Wade takes it in his stride. It can be known for a bit, bit of a rough area, but uh, I enjoy it. We have a winner. Later that night, they spot a white van pulling out of a pub. These streets are some of the toughest in the state, so Officer Wade always approaches with caution. Stay in the car for me. Thank you. Might listen, listen to me. My name's Senior Constable Wade from Mount Druid High Patrol. All right, let you know our conversation's been recorded, OK? Have you had any alcohol tonight? Yeah. How many did you have? I think about three. And what time was your last drink, sir? Five minutes ago. Five minutes? Yeah, yeah. Don't do something silly like that. Okay, okay, nice. Don't do something silly like that. Gian made a wrong move. Drinking water or any liquid before a breath test can be seen as trying to alter the results. OK, hop out of the car. OK, that was a very silly move and I don't want you doing something like that again. Take a seat. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to wait 10 minutes. OK, in 10 minutes' time, you're going to be submitted to a breath test, all right? So close, but yet so far. 53-year-old Gian lives just the next street over. Uh, the silly move that he tried to get a uh, bottle of water and put it up to his mouth to have a drink just pro, uh, before I did the breath test. Hey, yeah, because, because you just stopped me there, man. I got excited, sir. You got it, yeah. You got excited. And what do you do for work? I'm a technician. A technician? Yes, sir. For yourself or for a company? No, for myself. OK. With his licence crucial to his livelihood, Gian may be trying to avoid the inevitable. Now you are required to submit to a breath test. Put your mouth around it. Long, constant breath until I say stop. You're not blowing properly. What do you mean? You've got to blow, blow yeah. Blow. blow. Long, constant breath until I say oh. stop. Fail to yeah. do so as an offence, all right? Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's the way. Probably maybe a little bit over the range, but hopefully it's not. <laughs> In Bathurst, police have got themselves a complicated case. Is this your place here? No, we're actually looking for an address. Robert says he just bought this car, but without a licence, asked his neighbour Tanya to drive. Keep going, stop. Trouble is, she's been drinking. All right, you returned a reading of 0.141. And now she's blown almost three times over the limit roadside. But I'll ask you one more time, OK? And you be straight and honest with me, cos if I find out otherwise, Angry pants comes out. Am I clear? No. Oh. Is there anything in the car that is going to hurt me? There's an uncapped syringe in here. Dude, I'm not junkie. To cap it off, police suspect Robert's brand new wheels are stolen. It's got no plates, wrong plates on the car. The car's unregistered. I got stolen. Things just aren't adding up. Then Robert produces a handwritten receipt to prove he bought the car for 250 bucks. So besides that handwritten receipt, which that's you've written, what other documentation or paperwork have you got? That's it. I don't even think she has the rego papers for it. With no rego papers, 
His case isn't looking good. He phones home. Uh, Dad, where's Nan? I don't know. If look, I don't know if the car's stolen or not, but the plates are Nan's. They're off the VT. Just get someone to go to the police station, please. Robert's on parole, and if he doesn't throw up some answers fast, this could be his last taste of freedom. Ah, uh, crap. In Minto, 39-year-old Jason was pulled over on his way to the shops with his four-year-old. So he'll still yet get to the shop, but just delayed a bit. He's failed one drug test, but this bricklayer's confident he'll pass the next as he's constructed a concrete alibi. His mates were smoking methamphetamine, not him. It's like having a baby in a room with tobacco smoke, I suppose. If he tests positive, his licence and his livelihood hang in the balance. Nervous boss. Let's just take that back and put it in there. The end result, um, yeah, you've come up positive to the myth. Jason's now got more than a bit of explaining to do in court and to his wife. She says I drive too slow anyway, so... she prefer to drive, I suppose. You don't think about it at the time, you know, like, just carrying on your associates and here we are now. Uh, at least I didn't pay for it. Uh, I'll pay for it now. <laughs> but this brickie's not out of the woods yet. So, Jason, like I said earlier, you're receiving two penalty notices today, OK? One for not having your P's on, and the second one is for using your mobile phone when you're not permitted. It's an expensive lesson for Jason, and he may need to be more careful about the company he keeps. Pulled over after leaving his local, Gian tried to take a sip of water, which can be seen as interfering with a breath test. Don't do something silly like that. Long, constant breath until I say, say stop. You're not blowing properly. Then he appeared to blow in correctly. Keep going. Keep going. That's the way. Police aren't sure if he's trying to affect the results of his test. At this stage, you are under arrest, OK? You returned positive to a breath test, OK? You'll be going back to Mount Druitt Police Station where you'll be submitted to a breath analysis, OK? Yeah. So what were you drinking? Just having beer, yeah. Drink beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well as the three beers, Gian recalls another type of drink he had earlier in the day. Because we got the Diwali festival, the Indian festival. You are the Indian festival? I was sitting at my friend's place having kava. You having kava at your friend's? Yeah, yeah, friend's place, yeah. Kava is a traditional drink of the Pacific Islands made from the ground root of a shrub. It's not classified as a drug, but causes drowsiness and impairs reflexes. <laughs> I tell you honestly, yeah. Yeah. Made me dope too, yeah. Maybe what? Made me dope because now. Made you dope? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's our festival drink, you know? <laughs> Back at the station, Officer Wade cautions Guyan about his second test. Okay, this test is a little bit different to the one on the side of the road. So the first test that you did, you can't muck around and do something like that. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No. You're not blowing properly, OK? You're blowing like you did on the side of the road the first time. Once again, Guyan appears to be stalling. He only gets three goes. It only gives me a certain amount of goes and locks me out, and you get charged with failing or refusing to comply. And that will land him with a charge equivalent to high-range drink driving. Blow. I don't know if the car's stolen or not, but the plates are Nance. They're off the VT. Parolee Robert is struggling to convince police his new wheels aren't stolen. Just get someone to go to the police station, please. After extensive checking, Robert finally gets a break. It's not stolen, but his illegal plates are seized and the car is staying put. Sorry. What? Sorry. You're right. Wait. Oh, uh, yeah, big time. He's free to go. But his neighbour, Tanya, who drove the car for him, has blown over and has to go back to the station. 
you uh, um, yeah. been charged with any PCA offences in the past? Yeah. You have. How many? Do you work at all? Uh, okay. There's no doubt Tanya's doing it tough, and her drink driving record isn't helping. And you don't recall on how many drinks that you had? All right, with a nice deep breath, calmly and slowly into it. Okay, when you're ready. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, we're done. Thank you. The instrument has analysed a sample of your breath and has returned a reading of 0 0.116. OK, so that's uh, still in the mid-range. Your licence will be uh, suspended yeah. until you go to court, OK? Because this is her fourth drink-driving charge, Tanya will be lucky if the magistrate gives her a break. She's probably too easily coerced by other people that um, take her advantage of her. Watch it, it's away. Gian told officers he had kava, then three beers at his local pub after attending a Hindu festival. For your lungs up with air, when you blow, don't blow it all out in one go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No. And now he's struggling to provide an adequate sample. I warn you, if you don't do it, it only gives me a certain amount of goes and locks me out, and you get charged with failing or refusing to comply. All right? Well, okay. I'm, I'm but you weren't blowing properly. You're just hurting yourself by not doing this. No, no, I'll blow whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay, off you go. Big breath in, a long, bit, constant blow. Off you go, and I'll tell you when to stop. Blow. Blow, blow, keep going, blow, 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 keep going. Keep going, done, thank you. No, but three things should not be a problem. Fingers crossed here. Okay, this instrument has analysed a sample of your breath and returned a reading of 0 0.072 grams of alcohol in 210 litres of breath. What do you say to that? You're going to be charged with the offence of drive with low range PCA. If I can't drive, I can't drive. This is a hassle, no? Gian doesn't seem very happy with his result and blames others for the outcome. Maybe government should make it compulsory for all the pubs to have cat C bus so people don't drive from the pub home, you know? He's had three schooners and it ended up being within an hour, so that's going to put him over. After you. If you're going to have a drink, probably best not drive in any way. There's no snow point zero. In rural Orange, police aren't out looking at the scenery. They're on the lookout for drink drivers. Just around dusk, a white ute catches their eye. 20-year-old local tradie Ben has been caught on his way home from the pub. Have you had anything alcoholic to drink today? Yes. When was your last drink? Uh, finished it five minutes ago or something. About five minutes ago. How many did you have? I um, had a golden two years. Ben is an apprentice tiler. Just one day shy of graduating from TAFE, he's been celebrating with his classmates. What I'm going to do, mate, is let you sit tight for another 10 minutes to allow the mouth alcohol to get out of your, get out of your mouth. Yeah. And then I'll come back and breath test you then. Yeah, OK? Right. I'm on a toilet, rolling floor toilet, bathrooms and houses and that, yeah. I've been at Tate Bathurst and just had a few beers with the boys and coming home. Hey, you meant to have two in the first era and then one every era after that, I think. But I don't know. Righto, Ben. It's been about 10 minutes since I stopped you. So what I want you to do is one long, slow breath through that. Right about now, going, Ben's going, probably regretting going. his afternoon on the tiles. Keep going, stop. 
Oh, I'm hoping I'll be all right, but I don't think it's a good gut feeling at all. In Orange, 20-year-old Tyler Ben was pulled over after celebrating his TAFE graduation. What I'm going to do is get you to blow through this. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. OK, Ben, now placing you under arrest for the purposes of breath analysis. For someone who's just achieved a milestone, this isn't the celebration he'd planned. Here you go, mate. Oh, not real good, actually. Not real. Yeah. How's the work, man? It was um, my last block of toast, so we had a couple of beers. And oh, OK. Probably shouldn't have by the looks of things. Yeah. Fresh off his pee plates, his boss warned him this could happen. He said, look, just because you got your blacks, it doesn't make you invincible, but... At the station, Ben is wishing he'd listened a little more carefully. What about your last drink? So you said it was five minutes before we stopped you? Probably had my last sip two minutes before you got me in a minute. All right, sorry, Ben, so just take a deep breath, mate. If Ben blows over now, it's a bad start to a new career. Ben, the instrument has analysed a sample of your breath. Returned a reading of 0.072. So that's bad. Well, it's good. It's, it's, it's as good, good as it can be in, in the circumstances. Mid, mid or high range would have lost your licence on the yep. spot, OK? Which should obviously affect your work. Didn't realise the schooner was um, more than a standard drink. I would have thought a beer was a beer. I knew there was a difference between medium and full strength, but um, didn't think it mattered. Yeah, silly thing what Ben's done tonight. He's been out to enjoy a celebration, finishing his TAFE course, but we need to plan ahead. He's possibly looking at a disqualification period on his licence, which is going to make his uh, livelihood, being a tyler, a bit tough to do. Ben was found guilty of low-range drink driving. He received a Section 10 dismissal and completed a traffic offenders program. Guyan was convicted of low-range drink driving. He was disqualified from driving for six months and fined $800. Tanya was convicted of mid-range drink driving. She was disqualified from driving for one month and placed on a nine-month good behaviour bond. Robert received an infringement for displaying unauthorised number plates on a vehicle. Jason's laboratory test was positive for methamphetamine. He was convicted of driving with an illicit substance in his system, disqualified from driving for six months, and fined $800.